Well, welcome everyone to this latest episode of Jim and Java. I'm Jim Dempsey, your host. Well, welcome everyone to this latest episode of Jim and Java. I'm so excited for you to join us once again. Um, as always, if you have some questions, have some comments, please go down to the comments section below and put those in there. If you've got questions, uh, go out on Twitter. Uh, you can reach me at DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java. You can certainly always reach out to me via email at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com and uh, as always would love to have you as part of this community so if you are not a subscriber already uh, please I'd, uh, I'd just suggest that you subscribe and join us as a community to help to take our income goals to the next level and get fully funded so let's dive right in our next question is uh, from Mary in Fredericksburg, Virginia. And Mary asks, our financial people want to know our ROI on fundraising efforts, but I don't feel that's the best way to measure success. What are your thoughts? <laughs> well, Mary, thank you once again for that question. And um, I'll tell you, it's a tough one because your financial people, um, just as you have the best interests of your organization at heart. Your financial people have the best interests of your organization at heart. Um, unfortunately, what happens is that in their financial training, a lot of times what happens is that they are just simply taught to look at the bottom line. And the bottom line is important. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I just got through answering a question talking about net income versus gross income and talking about how my net income was not that good when I had a big name speaker. So don't get me wrong, the bottom line is important. But I think what happens too often, I believe, is that looking at the ROI is very short-sighted. It's only looking at part of the picture. What I've found is that people miss the component that expenses now could lead to big gains in the future. So it might mean that you spend even a good amount of money now but you're going to get a greater return on investment later. And that especially happens with startup programs. Uh, I think about direct mail and name acquisition. Direct mail is one of the most costly ways to raise money. It's not extremely effective when it comes to an ROI, but it's a great way of building depth in your donor base. We always say that major donors would you know, make for a deep um, uh, donor pool but the breadth the width comes from your direct mail and it costs a lot of money sometimes you're spending one dollar to get two dollars on direct mail on a good program but if you're talking about new name acquisition oftentimes I'm spending a dollar to get 50 cents I'm losing money on that and on the surface that doesn't look smart at all but if I'm looking at the long-term benefits of that, that $1 today could lead to hundreds, if not thousands of dollars in the future. So just because you barely broke even or didn't even break even on a new name acquisition letter doesn't mean that if you don't track that into the future, you aren't going to see you made significant gains on future giving, on lifetime giving. Who can put a good value and a good price on a lifetime donor? Someone who starts giving as a result of a letter and gives for a lifetime. You can't put a value at a price on that. There is no ROI that can track the lifetime gains of a donor. I think so often, if I was in farming, um, yeah, does it cost a lot of money to buy seed? Absolutely it does. And if I go in and buy that seed, I'm going there with the faith, the hope, the expectation that that is going to yield a bountiful harvest, a harvest that's significantly greater than the amount that the seed cost. Now, is there a guarantee that I'm going to have a bountiful harvest? No. I could have a drought that year and I could lose a lot. But does that mean because I, I run the risk of a drought that I don't put the seed in the ground? No, I've got to do it. Uh, but I'm doing it with the expectation that I've got the possibility that I could have a bountiful harvest. And it's exactly that way with a lot of development fundraising efforts. You cannot put a price 
on relationships. Um, you know, your, your spouse um, or, or someone that you're dating right now, you put a lot of time, effort, and money sometimes in those initial dates, those initial appointments, those uh, additional meetings with them, going to dinner, going to a movie, doing things, so that you have that, in a sense, long-term return on investment. You marry that person and you've got a, a, a strong, solid relationship for a lifetime. You cannot put a price. Could I, could I go back uh, to, my, to my early dating of my amazing wife who I've been married to for 38 years? Uh, could I go back to those dates and put a price and say, were those early dates worth it? The amount of money I spent? I can look back now and say it was well worth the amount of money that I put into that. But there's no way of putting a price on that. And I believe, unfortunately, that happens too often is that we try and put a value on something um, you know you may have you may spend 20 30 40 50 thousand dollars or more on your on your vision dinner that you do but that dinner might give you uh, you know that for for a twenty thousand dollar investment you might get eighty thousand or a hundred thousand or more from that twenty thousand dollar investment to me that's a good investment and yes was that a good ROI? Yes, that's one element that you're looking at, but you're missing so much by just looking at the ROI. You're missing the relationships that were built, the public relations, the recruitment opportunities that come as well too. How do you put a price? How do you put a value on public relations? How do you put a value on something where you're building uh, relationships where people decide they want to volunteer, commit their time. Uh, I've talked about labor, influence, finances, and expertise. The life acrostic is so difficult to put a value on those. So ROI is, is really just one element. And I think, unfortunately, too many people put a price uh, and a value on ROI uh, much more than it deserves or much more than it needs. So anyway, um, Mary, I, I hope that answered your question. I hope that helps. I don't mean in any way to diminish or devalue the opinion of, of our financial um, brothers and sisters who are, are, are just as passionate and love our organization as much as we do. But I just think um, they're not quite looking at the total picture, and uh, I believe that we need to do that. So anyway, that ends our broadcast for today. Once again, um, leave some comments in the comment section. If uh, you agreed with what I said, please put those down there. If you didn't, that's fine too. You know, people can, uh, I, I, that's all right to disagree. You may be a financial person that said the bottom line is the bottom line, and that's okay. So uh, I just, um, I appreciate you all very much. So uh, also make sure that if you need, uh, if you've got questions, go out to Twitter at DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java. And uh, if you need to reach me, do so at Develop. Effectiveness M at gmail.com and uh, please subscribe and join our network of individuals trying to help you take your income to the next level. And as I say, as I always say, uh, we are here to help you increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thanks. Take care. Bye bye.